Um, I'm Dr. Jaime Dizem, and today we'll be talking about nephritic and nephrotic syndrome, similar to similar to last year's topic. So learning objectives for today are when should you consider glomerular disease, the differentials, how to distinguish between nephritic and nephrotic syndrome, how to work it up, and how to manage it. So first, let's just go over some quick cases. You're a primary care physician, and you have a patient, a 10-year-old kid, who comes in with puffy eyes. So they're telling you nephrotic syndrome. What's the most common nephrotic syndrome in kids? Minimal change disease. Uh, you have a 31-year-old diabetic with nephrotic syndrome. Common things being more common. What's the cause of his nephrotic syndrome? Excellent. And then you have a 50-year-old, I guess, man, comes in with decreased urine output, hematuria, and nonproductive cough. What are your differentials on this person? I'm sorry? What'd you say? Um, yes, it was known as Wegner's, but GPA, um, or Good Pastures. And we'll go over what each of these are. Or asthma, drug trails, if they give you a history of asthma. So what's nephrotic syndrome? Basically, it's a problem in your glomeruli where you just start leaking tremendous amounts of protein. So that's more than three and a half grams of protein in 24 hours. You don't have to do a 24-hour protein collection. You can just do a spot or random urine protein creatinine ratio. It's just as good. Uh, you have hypoalbuminemia, um, edema, because you have decreased oncotic pressure. You have hyperlipidemia, lipiduria, and then you have hypercoagulability. Do you guys know why you get hypercoagulable in this state? Yes, you lose antithrombin, protein C, everything. So usually you get hypercoagulable the worse your albumin is. So the lower your albumin, the more hypercoagulable you will be, usually less than two. So how will you present? with edema. You'll have a frothy urine. Sometimes we'll ask patients in clinic if they have frothy urine, and that's just foamy urine. Um, it's not very sensitive, but we ask. Um, your blood pressure can be normal or increased. If it is, it's usually due to maybe volume-dependent edema. When you have a lot of volume, you can get hypertensive. DVTs and PEs, again, if your albumin is less than two, you're more likely to have this. MIs, coronary artery disease, also, infection because you have urinary loss of immunoglobulins. What about nephritic syndrome? It's a problem, again, in your glomeruli. And this is when you start leaking protein and blood, okay? But you're not going to leak a lot of protein. It'll be less than 3 grams a day. Um, you'll have hematuria, hypertension. And for most nephritic syndromes, you will have AKI. We'll go over which ones you don't necessarily have to have AKI. So again, hematuria, hypertension, you'll have oliguria in the setting of AKI, flank pain, and general, general um, systemic symptoms. So this I wanted just to show you guys is an RBC cast. Um, you have dysmorphic RBCs that clump together and they form a cast, okay? So this is kind of pathognomonic for nephritic syndrome. So let's go over nephrotic syndromes real quick. Okay, so the first one is, again, most common in children, um, but you can have it in adults. And the secondary cause of minimal change disease are NSAIDs, lithium, and Hodgkin's lymphoma. Okay, so what are you going to see on your biopsy? Your biopsy is going to be pretty much normal, except on electron microscopy, you're going to have podocyte effacement. And we'll go over what that looks like. I want you guys to know that you can have podocyte effacement in any nephrotic syndrome. If you're leaking a lot of protein, you will have podocyte effacement. But in minimal change disease, that'll be the only finding. Whereas in other diseases, you have other findings. How do you treat it? You treat it with steroids. The next one is membranous. Um, you can have, it used to be known as idiopathic, but now we have like um, an enzyme that can cause primary membranous, which was discovered in Louisville. Um, so it was caused by um, antiphospholipase A2, but they won't ask you about that. They'll probably ask you more about the secondary causes. So that would be hepatitis, syphilis, lupus. If you have a solid tumor, NSAIDs can give you um, membranous. If they give you a patient who's Caucasian, he has nephrotic syndrome, it's probably membranous, okay? Um, what do you see on biopsy? On light microscopy, you see those spikes and domes, the buzzwords that they give you. And on electron microscopy, you, sub, you see sub-epithelial deposits, okay? 
Um, how do you treat them? It depends on how much protein you're leaking and what your creatinine is. If you have AKI, you're leaking a lot of protein. You have to give them steroids and cytotoxic agents. If you're not leaking a lot of protein and your kidney function is normal, you can just watch them and treat them with ACE and statins and stuff. FSGS, um, so this is um, more commonly seen in African Americans. So if they give you an African American patient with nephrotic syndrome, start thinking more of FSGS. So it could be secondary causes, could be heroin, HIV, reflux, hepatitis, obesity. Um, again, it's commonly seen in adults. And it's usually on, on biopsy, what you see on light microscopy, is you'll see a bunch of glomeruli, but only some of, some of them will have focal scler sclerosis. Um, and how do you treat these people? You treat them the same way you treat minimal change disease because they're on the same spectrum. They're known as podocytopathies. So minimal change disease is not as advanced as FSGS. You treat them with steroids. Diabetic nephropathy, it's pretty self-explanatory. You have to have a history of diabetes. If you have diabetic retinopathy, gastroparesis, peripheral neuropathy, you will have diabetic nephropathy, Okay. Um, what do you see? You see um, on, on light microscopy, you see nodules, which are known as kimmel steel wilson nodules. And on your electron microscopy, your basement membrane is very thick. How do you treat these people? Treat them for their diabetes. It's irreversible. Amyloid. So there's primary amyloid and secondary amyloid. Do you guys remember what the primary is called? No takers. AL and the secondary is AA. So it primary would be maybe more multiple myeloma. Secondary cause of amyloid would be something like rheumatoid arthritis, okay? So what are they gonna ask you? They're gonna give you a patient who has AKI, uh, proteinuria, um, and they'll probably ask you maybe how you stain this, um, what stain you would use if you're thinking more amyloid. So what stain do you use? You use the Congo red stain. You put it under polarized light and it turns apple green by fringens, okay? How do you treat it? With chemo, we usually just send them to Hemonc, and they usually treat them with chemo. All right, any questions on nephrotic syndrome? Clear? Okay, so let's just go over. All right, so this is what we say podocyte effacement is, okay? Usually, your podocytes should be, they should look like columns, but they're really flat. Again, you can see this in any nephrotic syndrome, but in minimal change disease, this will be the only finding, okay? This is FSGS. So if you were to do a biopsy, maybe half of the glomeruli will be normal. They won't have any abnormality, and the other half will look like this, where there's just focal sclerosis in that particular glomeruli, okay? Then you have membranous. Membranous is... Um, this is what they'll probably show you, um, students probably. Um, they'll show you the spikes. I don't know if you can see. Uh, yeah. Um, you'll see the spike and dome um, appearance on your light microscopy. And on electron microscopy, you'll have sub-epithelial deposits. This is diabetic nephropathy. This is your kimmel steel wilson nodule. Um, amyloid. This is your... Congo red stain, you put in a polarized, polarized light, and it turns um, this color. So how do you manage these people? Well, it's usually, for the most part, not all nephrotic syndromes present with AKI. So they, you can have membranous, where you're leaking 20 grams of protein, but you can have normal kidney function. So what you do is you put them on salt restriction, fluid restriction. You can put them on ACE inhibitors, which has been shown to decrease proteinuria, just as it has in diabetic nephropathy. Um, you can put them on diuretics if they're volume overloaded. And if they have some cause like um, FSGS, minimal change disease, you can put them on steroids, cytotoxic agents if they have membranous, chemo if they have amyloid. You never prophylactically give people anticoagulation. If they have DVT, PE, that's when you would anticoagulate these people. And the most common nephrotic syndrome that gives you um, hypercoagulable state, do you guys know? Membranous. So membranous nephropathy is more, most likely to give you DVTs, renal vein thrombosis, something. So let's move on to nephritic syndromes real quick. So you have IgA nephropathy. So this will be a person 
who maybe has a history of intermittent hematuria, whether it's gross or microscopic hematuria. They can have normal renal function, so their kidney function will be completely normal. You can have a primary cause, which they probably want to ask you, but always remember a secondary cause is liver disease. So most of your patients you will see a Jewish who have liver disease. They have history of maybe CKD or they've had pro, um, hematuria in the past, probably have some degree of IgA nephropathy if we were to biopsy them. This can present with just one gram of proteinuria, or you can have nephrotic syndrome um, where you're leaking like 10, 15 grams of proteinuria. It can also present as RPGN. Um, so again, this is going to be a person who comes in on your exam um, who maybe had a URI, some stress factor, and a few days later, they start complaining of hematuria. Okay? How do you treat them? You can give them, um, you just watch them. But if they have tremendous amounts of proteinuria, they can be given steroids. If they have rapidly progressive GN, then you have to give them cyto cytotoxic agents. So hynoff line purpura is just a variation of IgA nephropathy. So this is usually seen in kids. And again, these people will present with more nonspecific symptoms, so they'll have more abdominal symptoms, colicky pain, um, and they'll have this perporitic rash. Okay? And do you guys remember on your exam what the kid's going to look like, what, where the rash is going to be? On their legs, on their trunk, on their behind. And how do you treat these people? You just give them supportive care. This can occur in adults, and when it does, it doesn't resolve as quickly. So we do treat them with steroids sometimes in adults. Next, there's all-port all syndrome. This is a type 4 collagen abnormality, and this presents as CKD. Okay, so this will be a guy who has a history, a family history of people being on dialysis. So don't start thinking it's like polycystic kidney disease because it, they're also going to tell you this person has maybe deafness in the family or this person's deaf, deaf themselves or they just have eye abnormalities, so that you have lens issues, corneal issues, so there'll be some um, family history of this. Unfortunately, there's no treatment for it, so these people will end up on dialysis in their 20s, okay? But um, they, will, they can get transplanted. Um, next is post-infectious GN. You guys uh, lovingly refer to it as post-strep. Um, but it could be any type of infection. It could be endocarditis that causes it, any type of infection. Um, it's basically deposition of immune, immune complexes. So this is going to be a kid or a person who had maybe a URI, some skin infection weeks ago, and a few weeks later they present with cola colored urine and AKI. What's going to be abnormal if, if it's strep, the ASO could be abnormal. But the complement will be low. So your C3 will be low, Okay. And on electron microscopy, you see these humps, okay? With post-infectious, your kidney function and your complements should get back down to normal within six weeks. If they don't, there's something else going on. You have to biopsy them and figure it out. Post-infectious, we never biopsy because it's not going to change management unless we don't know what's going on, okay? And it's usually supportive care. Just watch them. And like I said, they should get better. If you have C3 and AK, your creatinine has been bad for more than six weeks, you start thinking more of MPGN, which is membrane proliferative glomerulonephritis. Again, it's a problem where immune complexes are um, deposited in your kidneys, so you will have low C3. There's three types. You guys don't have to know them. Just remember secondary causes of MPGN. So that would be hepatitis. That would be endocarditis. It could be lupus. It could be any viral illness, parasitic illness can give you MPGN. So what do you see on biopsy? This is where you see the tram tracking that they always refer to. Um, so you have to stain it with a special stain. And then you see, I don't know if you guys can see it. But you see these double contours, kind of. The problem is that you have an initial, your original basement membrane. You have deposition, sub-epithelial deposition, and a new basement membrane starts forming around it. So then you get this tram tracking appearance. Um, it can be, it can look, um, when you do immunofluorescence, it can light up for complements, IgG. If it's lupus, it'll light up for everything. 
And then these are the sub-epithelial deposits. Like this is your basement membrane. This is a sub-epithelial, sorry, sub-endothelial deposit. And you're, you'll start forming a new basement membrane around um, the deposit. Lupus nephritis. Um, so lupus, there's six types of lupus classification, okay, according to the WHO class. What I want you guys to remember is we care about types three and four. Type one and two, we don't care about because you don't treat them. We care. We care. But, you know, you don't have to treat it because it's minimal change. Three and four will look like MPGN. Okay, they'll present as MPGN or rapidly progressive GN. So you have to treat these people. Five is membranous. Okay, so if you do a biopsy, it'll look like membranous, but your complement will be low and your ANA will be positive. Okay? And then, again, you treat these people as though they have membranous, and you treat them for the lupus. Next would be cryo. So for you guys, again, there's three different tri types, but for you guys, it's more important to remember that hepatitis C is associated with cryo. So this person is going to be hepatitis positive. He's going to come in with AKI. And what abnormality is he going to have on physical exam? Good. Um, he's going to have a rash, distal extremity rash. Why? Your cryo precipitates in colder environment. So your distal extremities are not perfused as well. So you'll, they'll tell you that he has some sort of perforitic rash on his distal extremities, on his legs. Um, so what can you check for? On your exam, you can check for cryo in real life. You can order cryo, but it's never processed correctly because, again, it precipitates in colder environment. Um, so you can just get a rheumatoid factor. So in the clinical setting, if you're thinking this person has cryo because of hepatitis C, check complements. Your complement will be low, and your rheumatoid factor will be high, and then you can biopsy them. And when you biopsy them, you see the cryo in the glomeruli. How do you treat? Do you guys know how to treat cryo besides treating the hepatitis C? You have to plasmapheresis people. The idea is to remove the cryo, get rid of the bad stuff, and prevent formation of more cryo, so you give them rituxan, um, and then you have to treat them for the hepatitis. So these people who have cryo, I think there's a patient who gets admitted every month um, who gets plasmapheresis for his cryo. What's RPGN? What defines RPGN? It's basically crescenteric GN. You have to have a crescent, and it's just a bunch of debris in your glomeruli, and it looks like a crescent moon, okay? That's known as RPGN. What are the causes? You can have anti-GBM, which is also known as good pastures. You can have GPA, which was Wegner's, uh, lupus nephritis, IgA, post-infectious, and even cryo can present as um, uh, RPGN. What's anti-GBM? It's um, an antibody against type 4 collagen. So if it's localized to one organ, it's known as anti-GBM. If it's localized both in your lungs and kidneys, it's known as good pasture syndrome. So this person, for you guys, um, may have hemoptysis. They'll have hematuria. They'll have AKI. What do you test for? Serological study, you would check anti-GBM. It'll be positive. We do a biopsy. And you'll see the crescenteric GN, so you'll see crescents. And then on, and this is more probably for medical students because they'll probably ask you what form, um, what pattern do you see on immunofluorescence? It'll be a linear pattern that you see. Um, how do you treat these people? You have to plasmapheresis them. You have to plasmapheresis them and you give them cytotoxic agents. You treat them for six months and the relapse rate is really low so you don't have to retreat them for the most part. The relapse rate is, I think, like 1% to 2%. Um, what's GPA? Granulomatosis polyangitis, which was also known as Wegner's. Um, so how I remember it um, when I was studying for my exam was the four C's of GPA. So you have a C-shaped nose because of recurrent sinusitis. It doesn't make sense. Just go with it. Um, you have... Your C-inca will be positive, okay? You have crescents 
on your biopsy, and you treat them with cyclophosphamide. So they'll probably ask you for treatment on this person. You can't plasmapheresis people if they have uh, alveolar hemorrhage because of the um, Cienca, but they can just have kidney findings, okay? They don't have to have lung abnormalities. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So how do you work up any nephritic or nephrotic syndrome? So a UA... I always say this. A UA to a nephrologist is like an EKG to a cardiologist. It tells you a lot about a patient. So as soon as you have somebody, anybody with AKI, or you're suspicious of nephrotic syndrome, get a UA, okay? So if you have protein, get a urine protein creatinine ratio. You can see hematuria. You can see CAS. If it's ATN, you'll see granular CAS. So it tells you a lot about what's going on in the kidneys. Obviously, you get a CBC, CMP. Um, get an ANA. If you're worried about, you know, lupus, especially in the setting of nephritic or nephrotic syndrome, get an SPEP, get free light chains. I know you guys always order a UPEP. You don't have to order a UPEP. Um, free light chains is probably more sensitive. So just get a SPEP and free light chains. Check complements. Um, get ANCA, anti-GBM, hepatitis, HIV. Um, if you're thinking about cryo, I would get a rheumatoid factor rather than a cryo because just because it's the cryo is negative doesn't mean the patient does not have cryo. Get a renal ultrasound only to make sure that their kidney size is normal. You don't want to biopsy somebody who has one kidney because if there are any complications, they lose that kidney, or if they have asymmetrical kidneys. So if one kidney is, you know, really small, six centimeters, and the other one's normal. Again, the idea is if that one kidney is working and a complication happens, then they'll end up on dialysis. So that's the reason why we get a, a renal ultrasound. Um, and then obviously a renal biopsy will give you the most definitive diagnosis. So let's go over some cases. Let's do some questions. Um, so you have a patient who presents with severe edema and periorbital edema. The patient is suspected of having nephrotic syndrome. Um, a physician orders a series of lab tests. Which of the following is not consistent with nephrotic syndrome? What do you not have in nephrotic syndrome? Do you have 3.5 grams of proteinuria a day? Yes. Is your serum albumin level going to be low? Yes. Do you have decreased LDL? No, you should have hyperlipidemia, right? Uh, do you have increased triglycerides? Yes. So the answer is decreased LDL. Good. Let's do a case. You have a 70-year-old woman who comes in with low-grade temps, arthralgias, and hypertension. She's lost 20 pounds over the past three months. She has a high blood pressure. Her, it's 170 over 100, and she has mild edema on exam. Her labs show her sodium potassium chloride bicarb. Uh, her sodium potassium chloride are, are okay. Her bicarb's a little low. She, her creatinine's 2.7, and BUN is 45. UA shows she has blood. She has proteinuria, and she has RBC cast. So, what do you guys start thinking of? Nephritic syndrome. Complement studies are normal. ANA is positive. Your ANCA is positive. Your anti-GBM is negative. The renal biopsy shows negative immunofluorescence with necrotizing capillaritis. What does that mean? Necrotizing capillaritis, crescents. These are crescents that you're seeing. So what are the causes of crescenteric GN? Do you guys remember? Anti-GBM. What else? I'm sorry? GPA, IgA, post-infectious, MPGN. Now, the complements are normal, so it can't be lupus-related. It can't be MPGN, right, because the complement's normal. It can't be post-infectious. Um, and just because your ANCA, your ANA is positive doesn't mean it's lupus, because, again, in lupus, your complements will be low. So the, your anti-GBM is negative, so what does that leave you? What are you going to have? GPA, excellent. So then which of the following treatment do you do? Do you plasmapheresis people? Do you put them on bed rest, give them diuretics? Do you put them on azathioprine and give them pulse steroids for lupus? Do you put them on steroid cytotoxic agents, or do you just put them on an ACE? I'll tell you, ACE is never the right answer in the setting of acute kidney injury, okay? So never pick it if the creatinine's abnormal. Do you plasma, just plasmapheresis people? No. Do you just kind of, you're like, okay, go home, 
rest up, take some diuretics? No. So which one is it? Is it do you give them azathioprine or do you give them high dose steroids with cytotoxic drugs? You give them steroids and cytotoxic drugs such as cyclophosphamide. Um, again, we went over why it's not lupus because your complements were normal. Your ANA was positive, but your complements were normal. So you, this is treating somebody for GPA, and you treat them with uh, cytotoxic agents and steroids. Now, if this person, if this lady had alveolar hemorrhage, she was on a vent, or she had hemoptysis, then you would plasma freeze her because she is now compromising her respiratory status. Okay. Next, you have a 65-year-old female who's being evaluated for swelling in her legs, which has been worsening over the past three months. On physical exam, her blood pressure is okay. She has 2-plus um, lower extremity edema. Her CBC and her lights are normal. Her BUN is 22 and her creatinine is 1.1. The albumin is low at 1.6. UA shows 4-plus protein, um, oval fat bodies with 12.4 grams of proteinuria and serological tests positive for hepatitis B infection. What are your differentials on this lady? So nephrotic syndrome. What are some nephrotic syndromes? I'm sorry? Okay, FSGS, what else? Membranous, okay. So secondary, so she had maybe a hepatitis infection. What, can, what nephrotic syndromes can hepatitis B give you? FSGS, membranous, anything else? Minimal change is probably less likely, and she probably have, like, um, lymphoma, like Hodgkin's lymphoma. Yeah. Um, so your differentials are FSGS and membranous. Good. So she undergoes a kidney biopsy, and she has membranous. So because her kidney function was okay, they decide to just watch her. Okay, so they started her on ACE, um, statins probably. Um, four months later, she notices her urine is very dark, and she returns for follow-up. At this time, her creatinine, she has an AKI now. Her creatinine is 4.5. UA, she still has 4-plus protein, and now she has blood. What's going on? Does membranous nephropathy lead to rapidly progressive? I'm sorry? Maybe I'm so MPGN is probably going to be hard to miss just because membranous and um, MPGN look very different on biopsies. Um, what do you think is going on? So you can't usually go from nephrotic syndrome to nephritic unless you have MPGN itself, okay? So that can present as nephritic or nephrotic, or if it's like lupus nephritis. But you already have a biopsy that shows membranous. Do you guys know what's going on with her? You don't have any other thing. So four months later, you just see her in clinic. Now she, you just are amazing, and you, you had a microscope, and you looked at her urine right away. Infection? Okay. Um, what would you do in this case? So do you think her membranous has gotten really bad, where she needs to be treated with cytotoxic agents um, and steroids? Do you get an imaging of renal veins? Do you do an angiography to evaluate for a biopsy that was done four months ago? Um, do you refer to hepatology for treatment of hepatitis B? Or, because now she has blood, you just refer to urology? Why? So she has membranous, which is the most, what do you see? It has the highest degree of thromboembolic issues in that nephrotic syndrome. So she has an increased risk factor for a thrombosis. So that what they're trying to tell you is she has renal vein thrombosis. Okay, so you want to treat her. Her nephrotic syndrome hasn't gotten better because you shouldn't have a lot of blood when you are when you have nephrotic syndrome. You can have maybe five to ten RBCs, but nothing like you shouldn't be just gross hematuria. Okay, so you get imaging of the renal veins. You see she has a thrombosis. You probably just treat it with anticoagulation, or you can refer to vascular where they can go do thrombolytic therapy. Okay? Did that make sense to everybody? Good. Next, you have a 9-year-old boy who presents to the ER with his, uh, with his mom. He has puffy eyes and cola-colored urine. He had been in good health until three days ago when he developed a sore throat. 
Um, he appears well except for facial swelling and edema in his legs. His blood pressure is high. Uh, the remainder of his exam is okay. Lab shows a creatinine of 1.8, BUN of 35, albumin of 3.2. Complement is normal. Um, UA shows 1 plus protein, 10 to 20 RBCs. You have some WBCs, and you have urine protein of 2 grams. What do you think he has? IG and nephropathy. So what would you see if you were to biopsy this person? What would you see? So a large hypercellular glomerulite is what you would see on post-infectious. So if you put it under light microscopy, it would just be inflammation in there, okay? Polyclonal IgA deposition on immunofluorescence, is that what you would see in IgA nephropathy? Yes. Yes, you would. Because um, that's how you diagnose IgA nephropathy under immunofluorescence. You stain for IgA, and it'll just light up, okay? Immune complexes um, with the spike in dome pattern are, what would did you be thinking of if you saw that? What type of nephrotic syndrome would you be thinking of if you saw that? Membranous. A wire loop and a hyaline thrombi in light microscopy. Excellent. Lupus. Um, antibodies resulting in a linear immunofluorescence pattern. Exactly. Anti-GBM are good pastures. So it would be polyclonal IgA deposition that you would see. So your IgA is just going to light up under immunofluorescence. Again, this person had a URI a few days ago. Post-infectious, you see it when? Weeks. Excellent. You have an 18-year-old um, guy who develops dark urine following strenuous exercise. His blood pressure is really high. His... Um, Urine is red in color. He has minimal proteinuria, actually, not significant at all. His sediment shows RBCs, um, RBC cast. His proteinuria is 1.8 grams. His creatinine is 2.2. Albumin is 3.9. So what do you start thinking of when you see this person? Nephritic or nephrotic syndrome? I'm sorry? Nephritic syndrome because his, um, he didn't have proteinuria. More than 3.5 grams. Um, his ANA is negative. His ANCA is negative. His anti-GBM is positive. What would you see on kidney biopsy on this guy? You would see the linear pattern on immunofluorescence. Okay? Do you guys understand all the nephritic and nephrotic syndromes? Okay, good. Um, so just a quick review. Um, you have low complements in post-infectious lupus, MPGN, endocarditis because of lupus or MPGN, or cryo. So if you have low complements, you start thinking this. Everything else is, if your complements are normal, you start thinking IgA, all cords, vasculitis, something else. Um, again, a conclude, this is just like a conclusion. Um, you have proteinuria, you start thinking of minimal changes, these FSGS. Um, how you can remember... Um, nephrotic range protein or um, nephrotic syndromes. Um, do you guys like M and M's? Yeah, just think of like an M and M fan. So you have minimal change disease, membranous. F is FSGS, A is amyloid, and N is nodular, which you see in diabetic nephropathy. Okay, so if you really want to go through it quickly in your mind as you're taking an exam, M and M fan for nephrotic syndromes. All right. Do you guys have any questions? Yes. If you have someone and the question gives you a uh, FSGS, mm -hmm. should you like start a workup for like an HIV profile? Absolutely. You have to look for yes. You have to look for secondary causes because they're not going to ask you about primary causes of FSGS. They'll ask you to know secondary causes. Heroin use, HIV, obesity. It'll be like some obese person. Yeah. So if your kidney, fun if your renal function is abnormal or you have worsening proteinuria. So if you have proteinuria, we'll biopsy these people. Absolutely. And they can have normal kidney function. Um, but if they have like maybe a gram of proteinuria, you have to biopsy these people. 
And it could just be class one and two where you just don't do anything, but you need to know.